Sonia L. Maxwell with TCTMD here at EuroPCR 2015. I'm sitting with Dr. William Wines of Cardiovascular Center Alst. Thanks for being with us. Pleasure. So it's been a great meeting. Uh, one of the first studies I'd like to talk to you about is your own, uh, Lumion 1, um, about PCI optimization with OCT. There are a few studies about this. Uh, can you tell me a brief overview of what you guys did? And then what does the study mean for the use of OCT in PCI going forward? Great. So um, we're trying to um, establish the clinical value of OCT, um, trying to find out which patients will benefit from imaging guidance in addition to the angiographic guidance. Illumion 1 is a step, uh, important one, I think, in this direction, whereby 418 uh, patients uh, were treated by angiography, and both fractional flow reserve and OCT were recorded at uh, specific time points during the procedure. Prior to starting the case, after the case was felt to be completed by angiographic standards, and if further optimization of the procedure was done, then the measurements were repeated again. What did it show? We were impressed by the fact that in a large number of patients, the physicians did change their planning regarding the procedure after they've seen the OCT information. About 65%, which we didn't expect. And of course, uh, in a number of cases whereby angiographic standards, you would think great result if you perform the OCT still, you do see some abnormal findings that are sometimes not acceptable and that need further corrections. And that happened in 26 or 27 percent of patients, all lesions respectively. So is this something that people should be doing in their practice now? Is this okay? Oh, there is no problem to, uh, today already to use OCT or other imaging like IVUS when, for instance, one worries about some angiographic findings that one cannot explain. And there is other uh, situations where there is a consensus that um, imaging will add to the procedure. For instance, understanding the mechanism of instant restenosis or confirming that the deployment of a stent in the left main is adequate. Okay. So that is okay already today. What we need to establish for the future is to which extent OCT guidance will improve outcomes long term and which patients uh, might benefit from that. Probably the most complex uh, clinical situations and or uh, technical mm -hmm. uh, situations like uh, CTO, bifurcation, okay. etc. Great. Uh, so shifting to TAVR now, there are a couple studies I want to talk to you about. The first is the DEFLECT-3 trial, which looked at uh, use of a novel neuroprotection device, um, it reduced brain lesions, and increased neurocognition after TAVR. How do you see this kind of technology being used in TAVR going forward, and, and what more information do we need? Yeah. Um, these results uh, did raise a lot of interest uh, because, on the one hand, um, we would like to improve the patient friendliness of the TAVR procedure by, uh, you know, reducing uh, the duration of hospitalization, perhaps skipping some of the um, imaging, periprocedural imaging or anesthesia that were very useful in the early days, but perhaps now that the procedure becomes more standard, um, may not be needed in all cases, the concept of slender TAVR. Now, on the other hand, we want to make it as successful as possible, reduce even further uh, complications, and of course, stroke is number one on the list, even though with the current iterations, the rates are becoming uh, smaller. So there is a balancing act between making it a patient-friendly and a swift procedure versus including an extra intervention like the placement of one of those um, uh, deflect uh, devices right. that uh, are intended to prevent um, embolic stroke during the procedure. Um, this study is, is relatively small but was very carefully conducted and it is intended to be a pilot study to inform a larger randomized trial. So only that trial will give the definite uh, answer to the usefulness of the use 
of these devices uh, to prevent embolic stroke. But already we've learned a lot from that study. We've learned about the importance of combining imaging endpoints that are extremely sensitive with functional counterparts, uh, i.e. the impact on cognitive dysfunction. Okay. So um, it will be important to include these endpoints into the studies, uh, future studies, not just the full-blown stroke that, of course, needs to be avoided by all means. Uh, we also have some interesting information about timing of those um, mini-strokes, so to speak, um, compared to the procedure. And there is a number of them that take place after the case is successful. So. Um, there is a need for procedural prevention, but perhaps also after the procedure uh, to be um, perhaps achieved with uh, pharmacological intervention. And a number of trials are looking at this as well. We'll definitely keep our eyes on that. Um, and then the last one I'd like to talk to you about is the Notion trial, which was also a TAVR trial um, looking at TAVR in lower risk patients. Now they had excellent safety data. So do you think that we're ready to shift TAVR to this lower risk population? Right. Um, what was presented here at Europe PCR is the uh, extension of the follow-up of those patients to two years. Uh, earlier, um, primary endpoint results at one year were, were presented already. So it's a randomized uh, study comparing surgical aortic valve replacement to TAVR um, in patients, as you mentioned uh, quite appropriately, with lower risk. And uh, to describe that in, in two, by two features, the patients were relatively young. They had to be 70 or more, which is much younger than uh, earlier studies. And also the SDS score, for instance, that is telling us about the uh, surgical risk were very low, on average around three in the two groups. And the results were indeed stunning in terms of um, the uh, safety of TAVR in that population. And um, it's important to remember that this trial was initiated quite some time ago. So it is clear that today both the procedure and some of the devices that are being used for TAVA have improved since then. So it's a very positive signal uh, in the direction of uh, treating uh, patients that are not at the extreme spectrum of risk uh, with, with TAVA uh, rather than with uh, surg surgery. Thanks so much for being with us. Pleasure. That Thank you for our, joining. That concludes our wrap up at Euro PCR with Dr. Wines. Thanks for watching.